Good evening, everyone. Welcome. I'd like to first say thank you all for being here this evening. I'd like to present our Honorable Mayor Eddie Moran. Good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us this evening. Um, I will have some um, remarks um, uh, during the program, but I'd like to invite uh, Bishop Brookins, who's going to share some uh, prayer uh, and solidarity this evening. Good evening. Let us look to God. Father, we just thank you for this occasion. You're the God of all people. You made us, oh God, as masterpieces. And God, our heart is saddened for our brothers and Ukraine, God. We pray, Father, that you would uh, surround them with divine protection. Give their president, oh God, divine direction. I cry out in the name of Jesus that you would cause them to look to you for their safety. For you have said in your word that you, you are able to cause war to cease to the end of the earth. And you also declare that you are a present help, a very present help in the time of trouble. And so I pray, God, for this, com this country, that they, O oh Father, will come forth victorious. And Lord, I pray against the enemy that will cause them harm. You're the God that is able to fight, for your word declared that no weapon formed against your people will perish. That, oh God, will prosper, I should say. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that you bring it to be true. As you have done it for Israel, God, do it also for them. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Bishop. So today's program consists of uh, several speakers that are going to be um, uh, giving some inspirational words uh, in solidarity. Uh, so our first speaker is Ms. Jessica Ditto. Is she here? Excellent. Thank you, Ms. Ditto. If you could please come to the podium. Thank you so much. Thank you. Oh, that's okay. You could, if you like. That's okay. Hi, I'm Jessica, and actually my last name is uh, Ditto. A, uh, classic mispronunciation of a Ukrainian turned American last name. Um, my father is uh, Ukrainian. Uh, I'm a strong supporter of the city. I'm a city employee and uh, I volunteered. I offered to speak. Um, I recently was speaking with someone about this idea of uh, ancestral sadness. Uh, you know, when uh, someone that you love or, you know, the place where your blood is from is in pain. And uh, I think that there's a lot of that going on. Um, you know, Ukrainian or not, there's a lot of people I think that are experiencing and being affected by hate and violence and hurt uh, in their own lives. Um, I had to do some research uh, because my father told me when they got here, his parents said, we're American now and they moved to New Haven, Connecticut to a Ukrainian community and learned very little English. So I, they weren't really Ukrainian or American. Um, I learned that he came here after World War II. Um, that part I knew, but what I didn't know was that uh, between 1947 and 1955, about 80,000 Ukrainian, 80, Ukrainians immigrated to the United States. Um, my dad, my aunt, and his parents, being four of them, uh, they came here hoping um, to have a better life, more opportunities, um, you know, leaving the Soviet oppression behind. Um, uh, it just, uh, it's nice to see the support. I honestly don't know another Ukrainian in Reading. Um, I've looked. I know I'm from Rhode Island, and that's where my family still is. Um, but I think, you know, we all, I think that we all feel um, hurt. I'm sure everybody here has been impacted, I would guess, within the past four weeks, uh, something or 
that has hurt them, you know, just uh, really based on fear in the end. Um, and I just uh, pray that that we learn from our mistakes uh, eventually. And, um, you know, I hope that this ends soon and, uh, you know, we can all, I don't, I don't know how to end because it's just so uh, overwhelming and I thought I would be last and I thought I would run out of time, uh, but I'm first. So I guess I will say uh, I'm grateful for the support that's here. I'm grateful that the city of Reading recognizes, you know, what's happening um, outside the city, outside the state, outside um, our country, and, you know, is looking at all of uh, the people that live here in the city and in our county that are affected. And uh, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. I appreciate it. And uh, thank you for coming. That's, I guess that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Um, now I'd like to call to the podium uh, someone who is also going to share some inspirational and personal remarks, uh, Ms. Uh, Desha Bunks. And please forgive me my pronunciation if I... Close enough. <laughs> Thank you. Don't stand in Oh, get close to the mic. Oh boy, I'd rather be dancing. Hi everyone, my name is Dasha Bunks and I stand before you as an American. But I also stand before you as the young girl who came to this country with her single mother and elderly grandparents after the fall of the Soviet Union. Today we are raising the Ukrainian flag and not the hammer and sickle. And this is to remind dictator Putin that when we stand in solidar solidarity with Ukraine and that this flag will not fall. When the news becomes too much and we can simply turn the TV off and go back to bed. But the people in Ukraine simply can't do that. They are trapped, many without food or water. Right now there are men and women who, are, who have picked up a weapon to fight who have never picked one up before. And they are fighting right now for freedom. A freedom we sometimes take for granted here. You ask yourselves, well, what can I do? I'm here and they're all the way over there. You can fight, not by picking up a weapon, but by providing them with food and supplies, reaching out to your congressmen and telling them we need to let in the Ukrainian refugees now, not tomorrow, now. All of this gives them a fighting chance. My family and I came to this country with nothing, less than nothing, but we believed in the American dream. I could sit here and talk about my family's struggles, how my grandmother was a Holocaust survivor, the agonizing process and difficult journey to come here, how we left our home with nothing, with no money, and with broken English, and how much adversity we met when we were here. But this isn't just about my family. This is about all the families that deserve the same chances for a better life. So as you go home tonight, tuck your kids into bed and feel blessed that you are safe in your home. Remember that there are women and children praying to be in the exact same place as you right now. While this may feel surreal to you, and you're just relieved it's happening elsewhere in a faraway country where you don't have to face this kind of reality, remember that dictators never just stop at one country. A man who was once a comedian, good one at that, is now the leader of his people. President Zelensky recently said, when you attack us, you will see our faces, not our backs, but our faces. Let's show Ukraine that we stand with them. Let's show these countries what American pride looks like. And let's remind them that they are not alone. Let's show them our faces. Thank you. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. Wow. Um, if that doesn't touch as you heart, I don't know what will. Uh, 
Um, now I'd like to call uh, someone from the Nativity of uh, the Blessed Virgin Mary, Ukrainian Catholic Church, uh, Ms. Paulette Sik Seko. All right, please join us. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. It's an honor to be here. Just looking at you beautiful people supporting Ukraine, I just know that you have such feeling in your hearts. And we just pray that those children, parents, grandparents, mothers and fathers that are taken away now and separated from their parents, that they will see them again. My husband was part of the war in 1947, uh, 1939 to 1945, and he was separated from his father for 16 years, and they got reunited four days before he was 21, or he would have never seen his father. And we have to remember, just like the person that spoke before me, those sirens are honoring the Ukraine. <laughs> just like she said, when you go home, look at each other, give each other a hug, and just say to yourself, we are free. And God bless all of you for coming, and God bless Ukraine. and going through this terrible, terrible situation. And we just hope that we wake up tomorrow or the next day and say it's over. And I, I just want to thank you. It's, so, it's an honor just to speak and let you know how appreciated my heart is for everyone and for Mayor of Berks County. Thank you. Thank you and thanks uh, the congregation that showed up today. Uh, again, we stand with you. Um, I'd like to call to the podium uh, two amazing councilwomen that will be sharing a poem. Uh, Councilwoman Donna and Councilman, Councilwoman uh, Marsha, please stand to the podium. And we are bringing with us Marie Morton, who lives in Glenside, in Great District 5. Uh, Marie is um, a U.S. Air Force veteran, having served in the 1960s at Andrews Air Force Base in Special Communications. She is a former City Hall employee, and her grandparents um, found a place of refuge and opportunity here in the United States at the turn of the last century. So before Marsha and I get started, we'd like to have Marie say a few words. I just want to thank everybody for coming here and remembering the people from the past. My grandparents came from the Ukrainian area, one from the western part and one from the eastern part. They settled on, in Miner Street in the 1900s, and they, uh, my grandfather worked at the Reading Tube, south of Penn, and then he worked at Carpenter Steel. He made his home here and raised four children, my, my three aunts and my dad. My dad was the youngest. And at the age of two, my grandfather was killed at Carpenter Steel in, in a coal shoot accident. And Carpenter Steel took care of my grandmother from then on and saw that there was burials and stuff for everybody. When my dad went to war in the 1940s, he came back and he had a job at Carpenter Steel and that's where he retired from. He was a hard worker and I know how them people work and I know how they were brought up because I was brought up old fashioned, just like my grandmother brought my dad up. And my dad always liked sunflower seeds and I didn't know why, but I know why now because his mother probably had them planted all over the yard. And you know what these stand for? They, if, you, if you plant one of these, wherever a dead person is, they will bloom. 
And my dad says, I never want flowers until I'm dead. And that's his reasoning there. But he came here, he made his life here, he had a good life, and he always referred to himself as an American. He couldn't speak the, English, the, the Ukrainian language, Polish or anything, but we lived in an area, he lived in an area, and he communicated with everybody. Don't ask me how, but he did. But he made a good life here. This is a good life, and we all stand together with one another. So these flowers I'm gonna to give to my, my grandfather and my grandmother on their graves when I leave here in memory of them, what they did. They came from the old country to make a life better for their family. So, okay, thank you everybody for coming. And as far as my military backgrounds, I can't disclose too much about that. My brother and I, we've both been in the service together into the Air Force. My brother spent 20 some years in the Air Force and I was in only for two years. And I was stationed at Andrews Air Force Base. And it's a, it's a very tough job what we did. We don't disclose any information. And to this day, we are still like that. We are very secretive type people, and the Ukrainian people do not tell much of anything either. You don't get much out of them. But they have very deep hearts and deep feelings. And since this has been going on, I've been feeling it. Even though I wasn't born over there, I feel it. It's born in me. And whoever is, it isn't Ukrainian, and whatever nationality, you're born with whatever happens in your country, just like we are. Thank you for coming here today. And God bless you, Ukraine. And when I heard that story, it touched me because it reminded me very much of the stories my grandparents told me. They were expelled from Lithuania. The Russian pogroms burnt down their villages very similar to what's happening in Ukraine now. They chose to expel whole Jewish villages and left the people homeless. My grandmother bicycled into Poland, much like the Ukrainians are seeking refuge in Poland today. She took a ship and she came to Ellis Island and immigrated and became a proud citizen of the United States. Settled in the Lower East Side, spoke purely Yiddish, so when I, that's the uh, language I remembered as a child because that's how she communicated. Very similar to Pennsylvania Dutch, by the way. My grandparents finally moved to Harrisburg where I was born, but their memories of what happened during their exodus from the land made me stick my promise to all people who face this kind of mass uh, persecution never again. We had to say that after the Holocaust. I would hope we would never have to say that again, but obviously do. So the message we all need to carry, this will never happen again to any nationality, to any country that cannot be brutalized by autocracy, by dictators. So my council uh, mate, Donna Reed and I are gonna share with you a poem that speaks to that message. If you can start down. First, first they came for the socialists and I did not speak out because I was not a socialist. Then they came for the trade unionists and I did not speak out because I was not a trade unionist. Then they came for the Jews and I did not speak out because I was not a Jew. And then they came for me and there was no one left to speak for me. Make sure that the Ukrainians and all those oppressed around the world know that the United States and our commitment to democracy speaks for them. Thank you. Thank you, Council. Um, I had some prepared remarks, but after listening to the speakers today, um, I think they said it best. Um, however, I do want to share that uh, this small gesture to raise the Ukraine flag today was to stand in solidarity with our Ukraine brothers and sisters. There's a lot at stake here, uh, this, especially the principles that the United States and the United Nations across the world stand for. It's about freedom. It's about the right of people to determine their own future. As we face these challenges together, 
we stand shoulder to shoulder, optimistic about our ambitious, common goals to advance democracy, deliver justice, enhance prosperity, and bolster security for Ukraine. May God bless them. May God bless the United States, and may God bless you all. At this moment, I'm gonna ask those that are here from the Ukraine community uh, that have, have families or have been affiliated or associated with Ukraine in any given way to please join me to help me raise the Ukraine flag as well as I'm gonna ask our speakers to join me. We'd like to thank Lauren Rapper for the donation of the Ukrainian flag. Uh, I also forgot to mention, my apologies, I also forgot to mention that for the duration of the week, uh, we're gonna have some boxes in my office here in the City Hall, second floor, uh, where we asking that anybody that would like to donate new, um, Blankets, uh, heaters, um, uh, batteries, flashlights. What else, Daisha? Asha. Batteries. Batteries. Um, blankets. Bl right. Uh, anything new, flashlights. Correct. Uh, canned, goods. canned goods. They're going to be collected in my office throughout the whole week. And three different non for profit organizations from New York will make sure that they get delivered appropriately. Um, also, I have been advised that uh, there's a pasta for Ukraine at 211 Gray Street uh, this coming Sunday, 12, from 12 to 4, where all proceeds will go for the people of Ukraine. So again, if you feel that uh, you want to do your part, here's a great opportunity to do so, in addition to keeping that community in prayer. God bless you once again.